What's up guys, this is Teddy. Welcome to my YouTube channel. This video, we are going to be talking about users and roles in Spring Security. And authorization and authentication are two words that you will see pretty much for the rest of your career and in every single security framework that you will ever encounter because they are incredibly important concepts to understand. And it's really important to know the difference between them. So I give a really funny example of your friend coming over to your house. Let's just say your friend is coming over and you guys are going to have a good time. But first authentication must occur if your friend is going to enter your doorway. And this is my house. So let's just say you are about to go over to your friend's house. You knock on the door. And what's going to happen is your friend is going to answer and he is going to authenticate that you are actually the person that you say you are. You are indeed a trustworthy person and he is going to let you in the house. Congratulations. You have just been authenticated into your friend's house. But as you go through the house, you begin to notice that certain doors are locked in the house. Maybe your friend doesn't want you going through his medicine cabinet. Maybe he doesn't want you to go into his tool shed because he has really expensive tools in the back or maybe he's hiding something in there. So that is almost a form of authorization. Authentication means you can actually use the application and this is in the context of software. Authentication means you can log in, you can actually use the software. Authorization means that you, even though you are using the software, there are only certain parts that the authenticated person can actually use. Kind of a funny example, but still reigns true and is something that you will carry with you for the rest of your career. So let's talk about the difference between users, roles, and in granted authorities. We're not actually going to talk about granted authorities that much. Granted authorities you, we will be coding up, uh, you will see grant, granted authorities, but I'll explain how granted authorities play a role in uh, users versus roles. So users are going to be, you are the friend that's going into the house. It's tied to a specific person and it's more authentication based. Usually users are uh, authenticated based on their password, based on their username. But we can't just stop there. Maybe we want the user to be able to use only certain parts of our app. That's where roles come in. Roles are going to be more authorization. They are the lock to the medicine cabinet. They are the lock to the shed where your friend is storing his really expensive tools or whatever type of weird thing he's got going on inside of his shed. And they restrict access to certain parts of the app. Even though the user is logged in, they can only go to certain parts of the app. But this begs the question, where do granted authorities come in and how do they tie into it? Because you're going to see this word granted authorities a lot. Granted authorities are almost a more granular form of roles. So even though a person could maybe access the medicine cabinet, maybe they can only access certain parts of the medicine cabinet. or maybe. Your friend may allow you to use his tools in his shed, but he won't allow you to use the really dangerous tools. So in a sense, granted authorities are almost a more granular form of roles. And in our app, granted authorities will uh, perform more granular roles in the form of read and write. So maybe a user can uh, go to a web page, but maybe they can only read or maybe they can only write but or maybe they can only update that is the whole entire idea be behind granted authorities and even though we're not going to use them as much as we will users and roles it's still really important to understand how they work so now what we need to do is we need to actually go in and create our user and we need to create our roles and where we do that is we just put them in our models so what i'm going to do in here is I'm gonna call this a user entity. You could, and I've created this in my models folder, you could call this just user if you wanted to, 
But I call this user entity because if you call it just user, it will conflict with a lot of stuff. So that's the reason I prefer to call it a user entity. But what I'm gonna do, just like in every other uh, JPA entity that I have, I need to call it an entity. And I'm also going to call this table of users because even though I'm calling it a user entity, I still want it to just be called users within the table. So I'm gonna go in here, then I'm going to go ahead and throw on Longbot so we can get our access to getters and setters. And I'm also going to put a no args instructor in here as well too. So now what we need to do is we need to create our ID. We need to create our generated value. And here we're going to set the strategy of generation type of identity. So we have a generation type of identity and just like our other values before, we're going to give it a private int, int of ID. You could call it long if you wanted to. It probably doesn't even really matter. Next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to call this private and I'll give it a string of username. So we go in here, string of username, and then I'm going to have a private string of password because all of our users before they authenticate are going to have a username and a password. The next thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to go in here and I'm going to create another class and I'm going to call this roles. So roles are going to be just like we talked about before roles. And in our case, we will have an admin and a user, but in order to actually code up the roles, we need to make the role class. So I'm going to go in here. I'm going to give this an entity and I'm going to call this a, I'm going to give this table and I'm going to name it roles. So I'm going to go in here, table roles. You probably don't even have to, but I'm going to, since I already typed it out, I think I'm going to anyway. So here we have table, and then I'm gonna go up here and I'm going to give this a getter. So we'll give it a setter, and we'll give this a getter, and that should be good for now. And I'm actually, this is kind of not by convention. I'm gonna move this up here so that we have our JPA stuff down at the bottom. Okay, so just like in every other class that we have, we need to go in here and we need to give this a generated value of strategy. So we'll go generation type and I'm gonna call this entity. And then I'm gonna go up here. So we have private int ID and then private string name. And that is pretty much all that we need for roles. As you see, a red squiggly line went away. But we can't stop there because now we have to implement a many-to-many -many relationship with our actual join table. Okay, so before we actually build this out, it's probably a good idea that we understand what exactly a many-to-many -many relationship is and what we're actually going to be building here. So a many-to-many -many relationship is going to create something called a join table. A join table is another table that JPA entity is going to create. You don't have to actually build the join table on your own, although I'm sure that you possibly could, but a join table is going to create a relationship where a user entity, so this is our user entity right here, and this is our role entity, so these are two separate database table. Our user entity can have many different roles. So if we were to actually have this uh, relationship with a many-to-many, -many, it probably couldn't even exist. And this is why you always see roles in other frameworks and in .NET and in Node. You always see them represented as, as many-to-many -many relationship. And it's sort of a difficult concept to understand, but I'm gonna try to make it very easy for you. So what's gonna happen is that a user can have, let's just say over here, we have a admin role and we have a um, user role. What's going to happen is that there will be another foreign key right here and our join table is going to house these relationships in a separate table so that there can almost be infinite combinations of users and roles. So a user, and let's just say our user is going to be Teddy, and our password will be password just for 
example's sake. So when a join table exists, we can have as many variations as we want to. So the user entity, Teddy, can be tied to a admin, but I can also have a user as well too. And when you actually look at the join table, you will see these patterns of matching numbers. And it may be confusing at first, but really what's going on here is that it's joining these two relationships. And it allows us to have user entities where we can have nested roles. So username, which would be the Teddy right here, Teddy and my password, password right here. As you can see, there's many different variations and we can have almost infinite combinations of users and roles. And that is the whole entire idea behind many to many's and why we have a many to many relationship with users and roles. So let's go ahead and let's code up our many to many relationship. And it's a great thing because JPA, JPA makes this incredibly easy for us. So what we're gonna go down here and do is we'll go here and then what will happen is we will have a many to many annotation, but we can't stop there. We're going to have a fetch type of fetch eager because when we load this, we always want our relationship to be shown. Whenever you load a user, you always want your roles to be shown because roles are important like that. You always want the, whenever you pull something from the database or whenever you pull a user from the database, you always want your role to be shown. Then we have to go down here and we can create a join table. So this join table annotation is what's going to actually create this thing right here that I was talking about. Technically, you don't even need the join table. You don't exactly need the join table, but it's important to have it because it's, I think it's just more explicit and you'll actually be able to see what's going on. So this is going to be the name of our table and this will be the join columns. We also need to create our join columns. And what join columns represent are, you guessed it, the actual columns, the user ID and the role ID. So here, our first join column is going to be a join column of user ID. So it'll be name and it will be user ID. And the reference column, as you probably guessed, is going to be our ID, just like in our user. So it'd be a user ID and it will be tied to this right here. Pretty simple, huh? So now what we need to do is we need to create the inverse join column. And this is what's going to be for our actual roles. So what I'm gonna do here is I'm going to have inverse join columns. And I'm going to have a join column of role or role ID, I should say. So we go here and we have our role ID and the actual reference column is going to be our ID. So we have ID right here. And it looks like I have some type of typo going on here. Let me take a second because this might take a little bit to figure out. Okay. Okay, all that I needed to do, I think I just need to actually fill this out right here. So I go roll and I go roles and this will be called array list. So we have array list and then we will go ahead and initialize it just like this. You could call this a set if you want to, it really doesn't matter, but I'm just going to call it a list. So go in here and then we need to bring in our array list. We see, oh, I need my new key, I need my new keyword. So here, got new, bring import our class. Okay, and I am going to go back, I'm going to refactor this. I don't want it to be called roles. I'd rather it just be called role. So I'm just going to go back and I'm going to refactor this and rename it role. You don't have to do that. I am just going to do that because I think it looks a lot better. And if you refactor it just like that, it will um, automatically do that. If you didn't see what I did there, I just clicked, went here, refactor, I went to rename and it will automatically do it for you. Now, the great thing is, is that because we don't need the same exact relationship, we still want the many to, or we still want our role to be included in here, but because we don't want that exact same relationship and we don't want the role to actually be pulled, or we don't want the user to actually be pulled with the role, we don't have to have the many to many on the other side. So right here, we can just get away with having roles just on this actual side right here. So 
what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and run this, make sure it works, and we will see if there are no errors. I hope that there are no errors. And it created both of our roles. So you want to check to make sure everything went through. Go to your database right here, and I'm going to click right here and refresh it to make sure that we actually have a refreshed database. And as you can see, we have our roles, we have our users, and we have our user roles. Anyways, hope that you guys enjoyed this video. Uh, if you did, make sure to smash that like button, make sure to smash that subscribe button. And as always, thank you for watching.